Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. For those of you that I don't know, my name is Greg Bluski. I'm the Assistant Superintendent, and I would officially like to welcome you to Stevensville Middle School, which is going to be our last event uh, with our meet and greet uh, with our new superintendent, Dr. Andrea Kane. So first, there's a, just a, a couple people that I would like to thank and, and recognize uh, as we get started through the introduction process. One, I'd like to thank uh, Ms. Tara Downs, who is our principal at Stevensville Middle School. Please give her a round of applause for opening up our school. Uh, I'd like to recognize our Board of Education uh, Vice President, which is, or Acting President, really, which is um, Zanette DiMaggio. Please give her a round of applause. And then we have many of our uh, principals that are in uh, the are in the audience this evening and I really would like to uh, extend a warm welcome and thank them for coming out tonight would you just please stand I know there are many of you if you're a, one of our school administrators or school principals uh, please stand to be recognized and you're You know, our, we just spent uh, three days with our leaders last week at our Leadership Institute uh, getting prepared to opening a very successful school year. We are very successful. So we really appreciate their leadership and what they do each and every day. Uh, tonight is an exciting night and a really an exciting chapter in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, and that is for you to have an opportunity to interact uh, with Dr. Kane, learn a little bit about her a wide range of experiences that she brings to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And it has been such a joy uh, to have her. Uh, personally, uh, I am honored to have the opportunity to serve under Dr. King's leadership. We have uh, worked together for well over a decade uh, in the Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And we have such a gem in a leader that our Board of Education has selected that I believe will take us to our next level of high performance in Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Uh, so I am excited. I know everywhere I go with her, folks are excited to talk to her, engage with her, and she's gonna talk about the time that she has spent already uh, listening and learning and connecting with people throughout our community, which is what tonight is all about. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to a dear colleague of mine, uh, who really needs no introduction to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. And that is Ms. Janet Pauls, who's our Director of Teacher and Leadership Development. And I will tell you, working closely with Ms. Pauls, there is not a place that we go that someone doesn't know Ms. Pauls. And what the outstanding thing is, and I always say this is like traveling with a rock star, is watching either the students, former students, uh, that she's taught or current students, uh, how they embrace her. Uh, she is a dear colleague and a great leader. Please give a warm welcome to Ms. Janet Pauls. So thank you, Mr. Poliski, for your kind words. Good evening. Tonight I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Dr. Andre Kane, Superintendent of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. A little bit about Dr. Kane. She was born and raised in Baltimore, Maryland, and is a graduate of Baltimore City College High School. She holds a bachelor's degree in economics from Sweetbriar Sweet College, a master's degree in curriculum and instruction, and administration and supervision certificate from Loyola College. Her doctorate is in educational leadership from North Central University. So you can see she is definitely certified for this position. Her first career was in banking. She served as a manager and branch manager for five years, intern and branch manager for five years. Her professional career as an educator began in 1991, where she served in a multitude of instructional and leadership positions. Dr. Kane is an educator with extensive background in teaching and leadership that spans from Head Start to higher education. In Anne Arundel County, she served as a computer technologist, list gets long, 
classroom teacher, assistant principal, principal, senior manager for elementary school improvement, assistant superintendent for curriculum and instruction, and associate superintendent for school performance. Dr. Kane has also taught graduate classes in school administration and school improvement to aspiring administrators at McDaniel College in Westminster. So she is definitely experienced for the role that she's serving in. After 22 years of dedicated service to Anne Arundel County Public Schools, Dr. Kane joined Richmond Public Schools in 2014 to serve in the role of Associate Superintendent of Academic Services and Chief Academic Officer. And that role, Dr. Kane provided leadership for the areas of curriculum and instruction, professional development, federal programs type, such as Title I, assessment literacy and research, testing and data, career and technical education, school improvement and innovation, early learning centers, the instructional side of information, communication and technology services, and adult education. Very credible for the role that she's serving in. Many awards and accolades. A few, she received governor citation for increasing MSA scores and one of the district's lowest performing elementary schools, leadership for 125 pre-K to 12 comprehensive and specialty schools, professional development and leadership in instructional programs such as special education, Title I, English language learners, district-wide efforts to eliminate achievement gaps, the creation of a dual immersion program in elementary schools, development of teacher and principal evaluation models, district-wide transition of 6,000 teachers to the Maryland College and Career Readiness Standards, measurable improvement in the quality of professional development offered to all educators in Richmond County Public Schools for launching the first district early college academy with the J. Sargent Reynolds Community College where students were able to earn their associate's degree by the end of their senior year, opening of the Aspire Academy a credit recovery program, and establishing structures for successful improvement while balancing academic and fiscal accountability. She's certainly been very successful in her career. Dr. Kane is a strong advocate for students and for quality learning resources. And she shared this with the administrators just last week, and she shared it at each of the meet and greets, which to me is extremely important and very inspirational. She places the, prior, the priority of students first and believes it is critical to listen to those who have ears in the community and voices in the schoolhouse. Every one of you. She has two adult sons and enjoys traveling. She's currently residing in the big county of Queen Anne's County. She's a member of the Fresh Start Church where Reverend Dr. Coates is her minister. At this time, would you please join me in a warm welcome as I present our esteemed honoree. And we'd also like to note that Dr. Andre Kane is the second female to serve as superintendent in Queen Anne's County and the first African-American superintendent. Please join me in a warm welcome.
So I'd like to also thank Ms. Downs for allowing us to be here this evening. Um, our new principal, we came in together, so we have a kindred spirit here. So thank you, and thank you to everyone. All of our administrators have been recognized. So would our teachers please stand, or anyone who is a part of the employee family for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So deeply appreciate your support. And the building looks awesome, so to your awesome custodial team, please extend my thanks because that makes all of the difference. And you know, so often we get ourselves in trouble when we start to extend thanks to individuals because ultimately we forget someone. Um, but I'm going to say thank you to all of you who have supported me. I'd like to introduce my executive team. So, and they are standing in the back smiling at me, which I totally love. So first we will recognize Ms. Jackie Wright, who is my assistant and is taking extremely good care of me. Wave your hand, Ms. Wright. We have Mr. Sid Pender, you know, Director of Operations. Mark Farley is our Director for Human Resources. We also have Ms. Robin Landgraf, who is Director for Finance. You already met Ms. Pauls, Ms. Janet Pauls, who's leading efforts for mentoring principals and teachers. So thanks to Ms. Pauls, where, where did she go? We have members from our public information office who remain uh, behind the scenes all of the time. So we have Geneva and we have Jeff with us, so wave your hand. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, my right hand, my buddy, the one who has made certain that I have had the most smooth transition any superintendent could ask for, of course, Mr. Gregory Pelusi. Wave your hand, Mr. Pelusi. Thank you so much for having me down. And I certainly couldn't uh, stop the thanks without thanking uh, our school board members and Ms. DiMaggio, who was, there she is, still here for having the confidence in me enough to offer me this uh, position. So I am grateful. I see uh, a family member from Anne Arundel County Public Schools who I worked with uh, a few years ago is here as well. So we're all family. So tonight, I just want to share a few thoughts with you. Not that I'm going to lay out a huge, extensive vision or anything like that, because as Mr. Pelusi alluded to, I believe that my job is to first listen and learn. So I have a lot to listen and a lot to learn about um, in getting myself acclimated to this county understanding who's who, who might be able to support schools and, and understanding what, how we might engage our students and our educators in different ways throughout the community. So, so far I've had an opportunity to be, visit with most of our schools, um, as many as I could catch over the summer, and certainly I'll be back there as soon as uh, teachers come back and uh, students come back, I'll be right there again. But I've had a chance to meet with our bus drivers, and that was a great meeting. I've had an opportunity to meet with Chamber of Commerce, with our Centerville Police Department, Centerville Rotary, our Sheriff's Department, Department of Health, um, and certainly many uh, fabulous and wonderful community members, such as Mr. Lawrence, Elsie Lawrence, who's back there, and who has supported every single meet and greet. I'm so grateful for that, and his lovely wife. Uh, so thank you. And, and certain folks that just come to all of them, I've met with tons and tons of people in Sudlersville, our commissioners I've had an opportunity to meet with. I've met with each of our board members individually as well as collectively. Had an opportunity to meet with the folks out at Washington College, at Chesapeake College. So I'm making my rounds, right? And if I miss anybody, I promise you I will get to them. But it's been wonderful. Um, and, and I'm going to continue that, and in fact, I'm going to be bringing my team along with me on a couple of visits in um, the coming weeks. So they're going to visit some chicken farms with me uh, and put on their muffin boots. I understand that's what they're called, and, and, and we're just going to have a good time learning about ways that we can engage our students. So 
thank you to all of them, and it's been an absolute pleasure. So that has been my first 30 plus days getting out listening and learning and understanding what the priorities are for different folks. And as you might imagine, some themes have begun to arise. And some of those topics include, of course, the tornado relief efforts for Kent Island. So we've had an opportunity to work with our partners and uh, provide some support to our families and any of our employees who live in Kent Island. Of course, the opioid crisis is an issue that comes up again and again, and we're gonna be offering parents and community members an opportunity to come and hear from some experts in the field and some folks who have been impacted personally and their immediate family, and I think that that will be of interest to all of you because one way that we can impact this crisis certainly is in prevention, and that's education. So we'll be offering opportunities for that. As I've, as I've talked with people, I've also learned that there are some things that we might be able to tighten up on and show some improvement and growth on in the area of communication. And we will certainly be doing that. And definitely in helping everyone understand the budget process. So there are lots of things that we could um, talk about, but We'll, we'll hold that for another time, but those are just, I wanted you to have an idea of some of the themes that are beginning to emerge as I talk to various groups of folks. So we'll be um, addressing each of those. And, and I can tell you that nearly all of the interactions that I've had result in some opportunity to engage our students and our educators in a different way or just to continue to engage them with the folks in our community. One thing that we are looking to continue is, or, or resurrect, is the establishment of an early college academy. And that would impact the, pretty much all of the folks in this room because we certainly want to be sure that our students have the opportunity to earn their associate's degree before they leave high school. That's going to prepare them quite a bit better for college, a four-year college, should they decide to go or it's going to save somebody's mom and dad some dollars when it comes time to go to that four-year university because we're going to have some of those courses knocked off for you. So we've had an opportunity to talk about some of those kinds of things. And so after you know my first 30 days and, and I continue to meet with folks, another thing that we're going to be focusing on, which is a um, important part of the curriculum management audit, and if you've not taken a look at that, I hope that you do, it is posted on the website, and we're going to put it in a more prominent place so that you can find it easily. But that is in creating structures that support our policies and our procedures so that we have some consistency, or should I say greater consistency, in the way that we implement those policies and procedures across the district. So Sudlersville Middle School is implementing and interpreting our policies and procedures in the same way that Graysonville Elementary School is. And that's important because when we have interpretations of things, it gets confusing. And some of you may uh, have experience in that firsthand. So we want to be sure that everybody is implementing those policies and procedures in a consistent manner. And, um, and I think that will help things run more smoothly. So we're doing that kind of thing. We have introduced to our administrators a new employee handbook, which really just describes a set of expectations for performance, uh, interactions, behaviors, and so that we're consistent in our understanding about what we expect from all of our employees. You know, as well as I, how important it is to understand what the expectations are every day so that you can follow them and be successful in your work every day. So we're getting that done. We're working on making some revisions to our student discipline policies and, and the practices that we have for our code of conduct so that it is consistent across schools but still giving administrators some flexibility in um, practices. So we're working on that. We're even working on an employee dress code. So there are lots of things that we can do to tighten up on some of the practices that we've had in the past just to make things more consistent um, and to put some structure around those things. So you know every superintendent or new superintendent has to have a plan for coming in. And so we usually call it an entry plan or a 90 day plan. And you've heard about my plan for my first 30 and up to 60 days. And as we continue and progress to the 90 days, 
The other things that I'll be focusing on will have to do with taking the feedback that I garner from meeting with different groups of folks and, and from our principals and teachers and taking that and to craft that into a plan to work collaboratively with our staff and various community members to craft a plan. And I can say that I'm most grateful because a lot of that work has been done in the curriculum management audit that Mr. Polusky got started last week, I mean last school year. But uh, I'll need some input from some others to continue to finalize that plan. And then to implement that plan and to monitor it and to ensure that the things that we have set and established as priorities get done. So those are some of the things that I plan to do over uh, my first 90 days. And of course, this night is, is one of them, getting a chance to speak with you. So I'd just like you to, to understand the importance I have for ensuring that one, we keep the main thing the main thing. And by that, and, and our staff folks know, I mean focus on students first. It's when adults get wrapped up in adult types of things that we find ourselves getting off track. So if we promise and commit to keeping the main thing the main thing, we'll be fine. We're gonna disagree, we're gonna have some things that we disagree on, and that's just normal. But we can disagree and still get the work done and be civil to one another. So we're gonna keep the main thing the main thing, keep children first, and those will, that will, if we keep that for, at the forefront, I think we'll do just fine. Um, so, in, in particular, I've been having some conversations with our teams and, and the different folks that I've had a chance to talk to about um, ensuring that every single one of our students gets what he or she needs. And so we've been having a conversation about equality versus equity. And for those of you who already know the difference, then you probably are engaged in that work in some type of way. Uh, but if, for those of you who are not quite certain about the difference, I'll explain it in this way. So I had a conversation with um, someone in our community with regard to our expenses, our per pupil expenses, right? How much we pay per pupil. And in making my point, I said, so we have two students. One student who um, does well in school, who, um, whose family is not in a lower socioeconomic um, group, and then we have another student who perhaps needs some, the support of some special services, maybe for speech or, or for some content area where they need the support of a special educator, or maybe even an instructional assistant or someone. The cost of educating the child that needs additional services to reach their full potential is greater than the cost to, to educate a child who does not need those additional services. Now, we educate both of them, and we're going to do our level best to give our very best for both of those students. But it's not, what they receive is not equal. It's equitable because we give each according to their need. It's not equal, but it's equitable. So if one student needs more, then guess what? We give more. And that's not taking anything away from the child who doesn't need all of that support, but it is providing the support for the student who needs it. We don't want to leave any student in the dust, not one single one. And, and, and that's the way that it ought to be. That's the fair thing to do. It doesn't matter whether what your gender is. It doesn't matter your ethnicity. It doesn't matter what your zip code is. If you need it, our job is to provide it at the very, very best level that we possibly can. So that's something that we have committed to as a leadership team and something that we'll continue to see us grow in as the years go on. So that's a point that I really wanted to make sure that you are aware of because that's a big focus for us, ensuring that everybody has what they need. And, and you know, there's a, a quote from one of my favorite um, poets, Nikki Giovanni. Anybody know Nikki Giovanni? Uh -huh. She was a revolutionary at that time, but she settled down a lot, right? Uh, so one thing she says is, we are better than we think, but not yet what we want to be. And I interpret that to mean that, yeah, we, we do a good job, you know, in what we have right now, but we can do an even better job. There's still room for growth. And that is so true for any of us in the positions that we hold. So, you know, it can't be about not, uh, about not taking the chance or the risk to step out there and do something a little bit differently, because that's about fear. And another favorite of mine, uh, Maya Angelou, she says, hope and fear cannot reside in the same place. 
You have to choose one. And so for me and my leadership team, we choose hope because we're about giving every single student the very best that we have. And that's our commitment. That's our commitment to you, and that's our commitment to each other. And that's just, we decided, that's just the way it's going to be. So I'm going to stop talking right now because I might be able to go on forever. But I just want to reiterate that I am so very, very grateful for the warm welcome. I welcome the opportunity to have a chance to speak with each of you, um, not only here, but throughout the year. So you'll have my contact information if you don't already. And just thank you, and I look forward to working with each and every one of you. So I'm going to make my way around to the tables. And if, while you're waiting, please have some refreshments. And I promise I'll get around to you. All right? Is that all right? Okay. Thank you.